Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be working through problem 1.5 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. It says, prove the BAC minus CAB rule by writing out both sides in component form. Now the BAC minus CAB rule is shown here, equation 1.17. And we're going to be showing that this is true. So I've written out the equation we're trying to verify again here, the so-called BAC minus CAB rule. And then here's how we're going to be splitting up our vectors using the unit basis vectors in Cartesian coordinates, x hat, y hat, and z hat. So the vectors a, b, and c will be referred to like this throughout. So we'll start with the left hand side and we'll start by calculating the cross product of B and C. Again we'll work this out using the determinant x hat, y hat, z hat here we have bx, by, bz, and then cx, cy, cz. So we just work this out as we normally would. Start with the x hat component. And that is BYCZ minus BZCY. We have always have a minus sign before the second basis vector here. And then inside the brackets we have BXCZ minus BZ. CX and then a plus Z hat times BXCY minus BYCX. So there's the cross product of B and C. So the next step is to calculate the cross product of this expression with the vector a. So let's do that now. We have a cross with the cross product of b and c. And this is, we work this out in a very similar way using the determinant again. So I'll write the basis factors in. leaving a bit more room this time. And then we have the components of vector A, AX, AY, AZ, and then just the components of this. So first we have BY, CZ, minus BZ, CY. And remember in this negative sign, so we'll just expand this out. Expand the negative sign. So we have BZ CX minus BX CZ. And then finally BX CY minus BY. CX. So this is where our expression can get quite complicated, but we just need to take it one step at a time. So we'll start with the x hat component. 
which is ay times bx cy minus by cx minus az times bx bz cx minus bx cz and we have the y hat component which is ax times bx cy minus by cx minus az times by cz minus bz cy and then finally the z hat component which is ax times bz cx minus bx cz minus ay times by cz minus bz cy So for reference, I have copied up the cross product of A and B cross C at the top here, which represents the left hand side of the equation we're trying to verify. So we've always got this up here for reference, but now we're dealing with the right hand side, which is B times the dot product of A and C minus C times the dot product of A and B. Okay, so we want to work this out by splitting the vectors into their three components, x, y, and z. Let's start with the dot product. So the dot product of A and C, it's just the product of the individual components summed up. So we have ax cx plus ay cy plus az cz. Very similar for a dot b. We have ax bx plus ay by plus az bz okay so now let's deal with this term here so what we're essentially doing here is just multiplying the vector b by a scalar and that scalar is the dot product of a and c because this expression here is just a scalar there's no unit vectors and there's no there's nothing there that would make it a vector there's no direction so but this on the other hand is a vector because we're just multiplying this vector by a scalar so this would have an x component of bx ax cx plus bx ay cy plus 
BX, AZ, CZ. Okay, we'd have a Y component of BY AX CX plus BY AY CY plus BY AZ CZ. And finally, a Z component of BZ AX CX plus BZ AY CY plus BZ AZ CZ. There's our vector expression for B times A dot C. So we've worked out B times the dot product of A and C. Now let's work out the value of C times the dot product of A and B. So again, this is essentially just multiplying the vector C by the scalar that we get from A dot B. So it is a vector, so it has x hat component equal to Cx Ax Bx plus Cx Ay By plus Cx AZ, BZ has a Y component, C, CY, AX, BX, plus CY, AY, BY, plus CY, AZ, BZ. And finally, the Z component of CZ, AX, BX, plus CZ, AY, BY, plus CZ, AZ, BZ. So there we have, now we've got both things we need for the right hand sides. So we've got B times A dot C, and we've got C times A dot B. So in the interests of time, I've actually just rearranged slightly and written out the value of B times A dot C minus C times A dot B here, and split it into the three different components. So we can actually simplify this looking at which <clears throat> terms we can cancel out. So if we look at the this first term, we have AX, BX, CX here, and then we have a minus AX, BX, CX here. So we can cancel that. And there don't seem to be any more terms in the X component we can cancel. So now looking at the Y component, we can see that there's a plus a y b y c y here, and a minus a y b y c y here. So we can cancel these. Again, that's all we can cancel for that for that component. So then, looking at the z component now, we can see a plus a z b z c z here, and a minus a z b z c z here. So that can cancel. So if we look at the terms we're left with, 
we can actually try and factorize to make our proof slightly easier. So we'll start with the x component. And look at the terms we have left. We can see that we can write this as ay times bx cy minus by cx. So that's this term and this term minus az bz cx minus bx cz and that's this term and this term so that's the x component dealt with now moving on to the y component look at these four terms we can see that we can write this as az by cz minus bz cy that's this term and this term minus ax times bx cy minus by cx so that's this term and this term but finally the z component we can look at these four terms and write it as ax times bz cx minus bx cz so that's this term and this term minus ay times by cz minus bz cy and that is this term and this term. So now if I take what I wrote on the last section in red and use it to simplify this expression, we end up with this expression for b times a dot c minus c times a dot b. So we have, well, I won't read it all out so you can see the expression here. And if you remember from before, this is exactly the same as our expression for A cross B cross C. So there we have it. We have verified that the BAC minus CAB rule is true, thereby proving that A cross B cross C gives the same vector expression as B times a dot c minus c times a dot b. I'll just write that out one more time. a cross b cross c equals b a dot c minus c a dot b okay so there's problem 1.5 from previous introduction to electrodynamics um i hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching